Yes, iOS 26 is here and no, your math isn't screwed up. Apple actually went directly from iOS 18 to iOS 26 to, you know, match the year, make it simpler for all OSs. And I know everyone's talking about how Apple once again copied Android, which they did, it's true. I'll get to that in a bit. But I think it's the new design, the new UI that deserves a lot more attention because you know me, I'm an Android fanboy through and through. And the attention to detail in this new UI is something that blew my mind. So hit that subscribe button, get those I jokes and Windows Vista comments rolling and let's get into detail. Oh, so the big thing in the new iOS update is the new liquid glass UI design which brings more translucent glass-like elements all across and I'll tell you what I think of it but first let me show it to you in action. I mean you see this new glass-like design the moment you install the update and then you see it everywhere. For example, see the clock and the widgets in the lock screen, very glass-like 3D look and the notification panel is like a separate floating glass altogether. Now moving on to the home screen, look at the dock, look at the widgets. They all have the new glass design, the icons have a subtle 3D glass-like effect, noticeable when you look closely and some icons have a new design as well. There's also a new all clear theme here that makes all the icons, widget, everything looks like glass and I think this is the only place where I'm not a big fan of how the new liquid glass design looks but, but to each their own I guess. Anyway, you can actually see the new glass design in a lot more places. For example, check out the new floating search bar in the settings which by the way is great for one-handed use or even the floating search bar in messages. The playback controls have this glass design now. You can see it in the app library too. And some of these floating glass bars dynamically change when you swipe up or down like here in Safari. And you see it in the menus everywhere. You can see it in the buttons. The keyboard has these rounded corners that make it look like floating. Like I said, it's everywhere. Every single app which had tabs at the bottom has this new glass floating bar. Now this design revamp is huge, but some feel it's controversial. Some think it's impacting readability. Some think it's a bit too cluttered, but you can't argue with the fact that the attention to detail is insane. It's not just glass for the sake of being glass. I mean, Apple probably hired a physics professor who always dreamt of being a UI designer because the glass here actually behaves like glass. Just see how the background elements change when I bring down the notification center. I mean, the background behaves as if it's a real glass refracting light. I mean, physics 101. You can even see the prism effect here on the edges. Just look at how text behaves with glass. I mean, this is attention to detail dialed down to the max. Kind of reminds me of the golden days when Steve Jobs was all about details like this. I mean, Steve. I mean, even in the floating bars, you see the same glass effect when scrolling through multiple elements and colors. And you see the attention to detail in animations too. There's a new bouncy animation every time you tap on any icon anywhere, or even when you open a menu anywhere. When you open folders on the home screen, it's just a bit more bouncy if you can see, and looks like a glass slab popping up. I like this new animation when you unlock the phone. I like this cool new bouncy animation when you switch from one tab to another in the app. The control center has this new animation where it opens up fast and just kind of slowly. Also increasing and decreasing the volume of brightness also changes the shape of the whole bar. And I said dial down to the max because all of these animations vary depending on how fast or slow you swipe or tap an icon. Yeah, like I said before, Apple really paid that professor well. Next up, iOS 26 also brings some wallpaper features that are just very cool. For example, when you use the photo shuffle option in the lock screen wallpaper, the clock in the lock screen automatically adapts to the different wallpapers. See this, this is awesome. You can also turn a usual photo to a spatial scene which creates this crazy parallax effect. I know we've seen it in MIUI, some other Android skins too, but still very cool. There's also a new album art animation in the lock screen when you're playing music, which looks insane. Only working for a few songs right now, but just look at it. This update also brings a brand new camera UI, but my question is, did we really need it? Also, it finally, finally makes the camera control button a lot more useful. Nah, I, I got you there. First of all, when you open the camera app, you see all the modes for a brief moment, then only two important camera modes at a time. Yes, it's way cleaner and you can swipe left and right here to use the other camera modes. And instead of swiping up, you now can tap on a mode like this to open the different options like flash, timer, exposure, you know. Now as for the formats and recording settings, you now have all the options right here. The phone app also looks way better now. You can see your favorites on top with these new contact posters, which also show up in apps like FaceTime. Now for iPhone users, these posters automatically show up, but for Android users, you have to set one. 
Anyway, below the favorites, you have the recent calls. You even see voicemail transcriptions right here. Very useful. Now you can switch to the older phone design for familiarity, but yeah, I find this much better solely for avoiding that extra voicemail tab that always has these red popping unseen bubbles. There's also new features to the phone app. For example, this call screening, which is just awesome. So when you get a call from an unknown number, an AI assistant actually picks up on your behalf, asks them why they're calling, and transcribes it in real time without actually ringing your phone. And after the assistant thinks they have understood who's calling, it then rings you so you know if you want to pick up or not. Pretty handy again in India. There's also hold assist for when you call the customer care and they put you on hold with that crappy music. With this, you don't have to listen to that music and it tells you when an agent comes live and starts talking so you can actually take the call. There's also live translation in calls just like Samsung which works in real time very well and the live translation also works in messages. In fact, it's not just the camera app or the phone app, there's a lot more updates to a lot of apps in iOS 26. Apple Music has a new auto mix feature which uses AI to mix different songs when one finishes and the other one is about to start, kind of like a DJ, yep, AI kind of taking jobs. You can now pin songs to the home screen like YouTube Music, there's lyrics translation so you finally know what gibberish you are singing. There's also lyrics pronunciation for people who like to ruin songs. And the Photos app fixes a big problem. You now finally have library and collections, so you have all the other albums and folders in collections, which makes things way easier. Thank you, Tim. Messages 2 gets new features. You can set chat backgrounds. Yes, hello, WhatsApp. There's also spam detection in messages, so all the spam, credit cards, stock market messages now go to this section. Now, at the keynote, Apple did not talk a lot about Apple intelligence, which is surprising because it's the obviously the best AI out there. But Apple did reveal a new visual intelligence feature and it's basically circle to search on the iPhone. And here's how it works. So basically, you can take a screenshot and now you get these two new options, ask and image search. Now, image search is basically circle to search. It's exactly the same. And even the results are from Google, so it works pretty well. The ask option uses chat GPT, so it describes you the image. And now you can ask it more questions you have. It even suggests you to add things to the calendar when there's something with an event involved. Yep, circle search, Gemini, essential space, all sort of rolled into one. No, you're not getting CarPlay Ultra in your Maruti yet, but what you'll get is a lot of glass. I mean, this is the new CarPlay and it gets the same glass elements everywhere. But what's cool is that now you have widgets here, which is pretty awesome. You also get incoming calls like this. Now it doesn't come with a full screen and more importantly, it does not hide the apps right before I have to take a turn. Same with message notifications and it also supports live activities. So great update to CarPlay. Now, apart from all these new features and app updates, there's actually a couple of new apps that iOS 26 brings. So iOS finally gets the preview app from macOS. You can finally open PDFs on your iPhone, annotate on them, add a text, you know, add a signature. Yes, finally. There's a new games app, which is just your different games. Yeah, if Android did it, we'd call it bloatware. But hey, it also lets you add friends, shows you the list of games you've installed. You get the idea. Now, apart from this, there's more changes, like the battery section is changed entirely. Now shows the remaining charge time, which also shows up above lock screen. There's adaptive power mode, which uses AI to make performance adjustments for battery life. You can now choose a different microphone in settings, sounds and haptics. There's also a new late night mode in sounds and haptic settings. Look, I can go on and on. There's a lot more features, but the truth is, yes, a lot of the features take inspiration from Android. And yes, there's a lot of features still missing. For example, there's no better notification center, still no clipboard, still no universal back gesture. Apple intelligence is still Apple intelligence. There's still no better Siri, which is still supposed to be coming soon. But yes, clearly this update is all about the new UI redesign. Yes, the new liquid glass design is here and this is going to be controversial. I also want to see how it performs and stable because right now it's smooth on the 16 Pro, laggy on the 15 Pro. It's beta, but still. But yeah, I want to know from you guys. What do you guys think of the new liquid glass design on the iOS 26? Comment down below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget that subscribe button. See you in the next one. I got my brothers and my fam standing next to me. I go to work for what I love until the death.